we're going to be showing how to do exponential growth and decay models. So I'm going to try to remind you a little bit about this and hear how an exponential equation goes. Uh, but basically, it goes like this guy's hair. It's perfect. So let's see here. We, we have some generic equations we can use. So we have a general one. So we can say f of x, let's say. And it has to be an exponential. It needs to have an exponent somewhere. So we can define something like a k. Uh, we can make it a to the power of x plus c. We're sort of doing a generic version of it here. And by the way, we're going to see what happens also if we do similar thing, except if we make it negative exponents. So we'll make f of x equals same k a to the negative x plus c. The idea here will be to try to see ha -ha, um, what kind of shape these things have. Now f of x is your y value, x is your x value, and these k, a, and c's, those are just constants. They're just coefficients to try to find. So let me show you what it looks like. Um, I like using my calculator for this, especially the TI Inspire, because you can do a generic equation and see what happens here. So watch, I'm going to say k, you have to put the times or else it messes it all up, times a to the power of x, and all that plus c. Watch very carefully. Now it's going to ask me, do you want to make a slider for these? I go, yeah, yeah, thanks. And I'll put it right here. So let's play around with these different values of k here. And let's let's maybe take a look and see if we need to do some limitations for this. Because it turns out we do have to um, have some stipulations here. We're going to make a greater than 0. And we're also going to make k not equal to 0, because if we made it 0, then this thing wouldn't be exponential. Okay, So we'll define it like this. Same with here as well. I will say, yeah, maybe I'll put it in here. So a greater than 0, k cannot be 0. So let's take a look then what happens. So what if I make uh, a greater than 0? Let's say 1 or 2 or 3 or whatever. Do you notice what happens then? Look at the shape. So the shape goes kind of like, kind of like this, right? something like that. And I'm playing with k. Let's see what happens with k. If I play with it, well, I can also make it steeper. Of course, I can make it zero, but I said we're not allowed to make it zero. Um, so that's important. What about C? Notice what C does. C just drags it up and down. Do you notice? That's all C does. So let's see how, how if we can figure this out. If we make this um, something like that, do you notice in what shape it has? On average, it goes kind of like this, doesn't it? You notice that? So I'm going to try to draw that graph right there. I'm going to say, all right, I want my graph to look like something like this like that now i'm going to make a dotted line here because that is an asymptote and hey that's a horizontal asymptote h a now what does it look like it is let's take a look here do you notice carefully if i make c1 do you notice my horizontal asymptote is 1. If I make C2, do you notice it bumps it up? And look, it's 2. And if I make C equal to 3, do you notice it bumps it up to 3? If you know about translations and transformations, that's because adding something to a function just raises it up or down by that amount. So does it make sense then that whatever I make this value here, whatever I make C, uh, that's going to be my horizontal asymptote? So that'll be, uh, let's see, it always goes, I forgot to label my Y and my X here. I should have done that. So my horizontal asymptote then will be just, let's see, it'll be an equation that goes y equals c. I hope that makes sense. So that's my horizontal asymptote here. So it'll always be like this. Now keep in mind, normally when we do a horizontal asymptote, we do it by looking at what happens when you have x equals in, uh, infinity, I mean one way or the other. It all depends on how you decide to draw it, but this is really your asymptote here. Now, this one right here, if I do x, to, oh, by the way, I haven't done the y-intercept yet. Let's think about what happens at the y-intercept. At the y-intercept where it crosses this, does it make sense that that's when x value equals 0? So let's take a look at this then. If I made x equal to 0, so now I'm going to do f of 0, what do I get? I'm going to get k times a to the 0 plus c. Do you know what anything to the power of 0 is? Just 1. So this becomes just a 1. So that becomes in 1 times k. So do you notice then my y-intercept just becomes just k, because that's all that's left here. This is just a k, plus c. That's my y-intercept. I'll write it like this. So y-intercept. I'm just doing it in general, right? But this is how it would work. 
Oops, God, I wrote it really badly, didn't I? Y intercept. There we go. So that's how I can do this. Now, what do you think happens when I make my exponent negative? You can try to think about it, or we can just do it on our graphing calculator here and see what happens. So what if I make instead, now I'm going to make this one right here, minus x. It just reversed it. Well, it made a mirror image of it, right? So it just flipped it across the, it looks like across the y-axis. So you notice then it does something like this, but still, this still does the same thing. So you notice the y-intercept and the uh, horizontal asymptote are still the same. So do you notice then it just it just flips the shape of it. So it goes like this instead. Something like this. Like that. Okay? But still horizontal asymptote y equals c, still y intercept k plus c. Now we can do this with um, an exponential as well. So we can do it like this. So we can say, hey, let's do it with um, the exponential function, the e, this so-called e here. And we can make it k times e to the rx plus c, something like this. And let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to try to do the same sort of thing, except this time I'm going to change this equation here. Whoops. Tab. I mean, you know what? I'll, do, I'll just, do, just do a different page. Uh, actually, no, I shouldn't do that. It'll mess up my coefficients. I'll just do a new graph altogether. All right, so I'll call it k times e to the power of r times x, you have to put the times, or else it messes it up, plus c. Do I want sliders? Yes, please. There we go. Do you notice it looks a lot like um, the one on the other page did? That's because it's supposed to. It's supposed to be basically identical here. So we have it like this right here. So this one right here then will look just like the other ones did, okay? So just like this. Let me just draw my x's and my y's here. All right. I should have done it here. And it's going to look just like this one right here. So let me do that one right there. So um, it's going to look like this. Something like that. With a dotted line across like that. Similar, similar thing. Do you notice? And as I'm playing around with my different values of R, I can do some funny things. I can make it steeper. I can play with K. Make it something with this steepness as well. Um, and C just raises it up and down. Same sort of idea here happening, okay? And by the way, do you remember what e to the 1 is? Because uh, this is this exponential function here. It's uh, 2 point, what is it here? e to the 1 is approximately equal to 2.71828, something like that. I mean, it keeps going, right? That's why I really like this one right here. This is like this uh, exponential um, water slide. <laughs> It's called e to the power of fun. And look, you have 2.72 seconds of free fall. Why would that be? Because it'd be like this if you just flipped it, right? In sufficient conditions, you can make this graph do that, can't you? Look, you can make it drop, can't you? Uh, let's see if you may if you play with K right here. Look, you can make it drop. Wow. So this sort of idea here. Now, let's model a real situation. So I looked up the number of COVID-19 cases in Canada, my home country, from January 2020. So from the very start of January 2020 until March 2020, we have some uh, function. Now it's way past then now, but I was just looking at just this one data set here. So we have this thing. It's a n of t equals 0.74 e to the power of 0.2 times t minus 23 plus 4.5. Now n of t is the number of cases. T is the number of days since January 1st. So using this model, you'll see this is actually quite straightforward to do. Using this model, how many cases uh, you know, were there on January 1st, 2020? Well, what happens on January 1st? How many days is that? Well, if T is the number of days since January 1st, does it make sense that T equals zero? That's the key to do this. So that means I need to do N of zero. I just put in a zero everywhere. Well, it's 0.74 times e to the power of 0 0.2 times 0 minus 23, all that plus 4.5. Now, you could actually go ahead and figure this out. In fact, whoops, it's supposed to be an e here. So there's a number of ways of doing this. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just do a graph of this. That's maybe a good way to do it. So let me just do the graph. Graph, and I'll just put all this in. This, is, I think, will be helpful. So 0 0.74 times e to the power of 0 0.2 times brackets. 
I'll say x minus 23, close the bracket and get out of there and say plus 4.5. There we go, there's my graph. Now you might think, oh, what happens to it? Well, it does rise. Do you notice it actually goes up depending on the days here? So let's take a look at what happens then at uh, zero, right? You can look at this as the uh, intercept here. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. You could just say analyze maybe and do, um, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll do trace, do a graph trace. And I'll just type in x equals zero. And y is equal to 4.51. So that means there are, this is kind of weird. That means that n of zero equals 4.51 cases. Now we'll probably have to round, don't we? So are we gonna round it up or down? I'm actually gonna round it down. So I'm gonna say, all right, so four cases. I mean, it's a model, right? It's not perfect, because you might wonder, well, can you really have 4.51 cases? No, that's what the mathematical model tells you, but you have to think about what makes it make sense in real life. Now, you might decide to round it up to five, depending on how you're thinking about it, but at least you know, four or five cases should be fine. Now, we're told that the population of Canada on January 1st, 2020 was 38 million people. Calculate the number of COVID cases on January 1st, 2021 and comment on whether or not this is realistic. What do you think I have to do? I'm going to use this model, right? This model right here that we have, that we're given, and I'm going to use it then to predict, because good models should predict. And let's see what happens then. So I'm going to use this, I'm going to say, all right, I want n of now. How many days have I gone forward? Well, if t is defined as the day since January 1st, 2020, and I'm at January 1st, 2021, I could say, I mean, I know you could say it's technically a quarter because it's leap years and stuff, but let's just say it's n of 365. That'll be what the population, or what the number of people who have COVID-19 in Canada is. So let's take a look at this. So it's 0.74 times e to the power of 0.2 times 365 minus 23, all that plus 4.5. Now we could have done it on a calculator. I would like to show you I mean, yeah, I guess I could. I can just say 365. Uh, here's the problem, it's sort of off my scale. Uh, so what I'm gonna do instead, maybe what I'll do is I'll just add a new page, actually. I'll just add a new calculator page. I'll just, I'll just calculate this. So I'll say 0 0.74 times, uh, whoops, I don't need that actually, times e to the power of 0 0.2, I'll make it look nice, 0 0.2 times brackets 365 minus 23, all that plus 4.5. Let's see what I get here. Ooh, I get a big number, don't I? I get 3.76 times 10 to the 29. So 3.76 times 10 to the 29. Whoa, what does that mean? So this right here, this is my number. So this is this number of people who have COVID-19 in Canada. Okay, this is the answer. Now, does this make sense? Is this reasonable? Well, what is the population, uh, at least in 2020? So I'll say so, but, you know, in 2020, there's only, how many people in Canada? 38 million, so that's uh, 38 times 10 to the six people. in Canada. So what can you define, what can you say then? This is not realistic. So your model, although it's useful for predicting close things, this is not realistic. In fact, what's the population of the Earth? Well, it's a few billion, right? It's 10 to the 7. This is huge. This is actually, this is a little bit crazy. This is, okay, we actually have an estimate, uh, I mean, the number of stars in the universe is actually less than this. So this is I'll say this, this is more than the number of stars. I thought that would actually be a funny way to do it in the universe. So what does this tell you? It tells you, well, this model, it can't just follow this shape that we, that we had on our graph. It must go down or something else must happen because this model is not feasible at this value here. Maybe it worked really well from January to March to model it, you know, because this is a graph that sort of goes like this. But if you keep going up, you know, it goes up it's like, whoa, like crazy. Like, well, we hope not because there's more people than there are even in Canada. I mean, it's, 
<laughs> this is way more. All right. So that's just why. So this is an answer. It's not realistic. This is more than number of stars in the universe. It's many, many, many orders of magnitude, right? It's 20, It's uh, 10 to the 23 times more uh, than just the population of Canada. So not realistic. Why are we using these? Or how can, why should you care about this stuff? Well, we have things like radioactive decay, if you've ever heard of that. Uh, we have that in physics, for example. Um, actually, it goes like this, n0e to the minus lambda t, for example. So we have this exponential decay, something that goes like this. This is like number of atoms, let's say, remaining, and this is time. It goes down like this. Cooling a liquid. Uh, this is called uh, Newton's law of cooling. I mean, that goes like this something like that. Spread of a virus. Well, we just learned it might go up like this. We have finance, we have population growth as well. So lots of different things we can use for modeling using an exponential equation. 